I'm setting up a line shaft to power a couple of different machines from my stationary engine. I don't know how this is going to work exactly, but in theory, it's simple enough. I just need to set up a long round shaft and arrange pulleys along it. Line shafts are not very fashionable anymore, partly because the connecting belts could be dangerous. But the alternative is to have an engine or a motor for every single machine you have. Which is crazy, isn't it, really? <laughs> I was tempted to put the shaft along the floor, but went for under the roof timbers instead. So I'm making brackets to hang the bearings on from some Douglas fir. Now this is inch and a half shaft that I had. It's not long enough, this piece, but this is just the first part. I drilled a hole in the end. This is part of my plan to connect two lengths of shaft. I'm using a taper lock pulley. These are not cheap, but they're the easiest to set up because you only need an Allen key to move them or change them. Now this is EN8 round bar, which is not very round, so the bearings didn't want to go on without some persuasion, so I persuaded them. Then I hung it on the wall. Then I remembered to thread on the V-belt. If something jams up somewhere, I'm sure the engine will just pull this assembly down, along with the roof. But I'm not going to try to connect high torque machines to this, so it should be all right, maybe. It will definitely need a clutch, so I can start the engine without spinning the shaft. So I made up this frame to support this pulley. Hinged above the first pulley on my shaft, it should tighten the belt when activated. But how to activate it? I wanted to avoid ropes, so I came up with a sideways lever. Then I added some triangulation to support the brackets as much as possible. And tried it out.
So far so good, but it's not very far, so I need to make this much longer. I had thought I'd just add more bearing support along the wooden frame for the extra shaft, but then I decided that the end needed more support than that, so I needed an upright, and that upright needed to be an odd shape, but luckily I now have a bandsaw to cut odd shapes. Will did a lovely job. Well done, that is great, isn't it? It's a lovely, uh, lovely thing to work with. Yeah. It made us wonder what other things we could make with a powerful saw like this. If only we had more time. Will had gone again by the time I was ready for putting this up. It's a bit heavy and awkward. But after a lot of tweaking, I got both shafts lined up with each other. But how to connect them? Well, apparently, it's as simple as a loose collar. The pairs of holes at 90 degrees to each other. I'm using nylon nuts so they don't fall off. and started the engine and let in the clutch. And it sort of worked. Everything spun freely and nothing fell off, but there was too much flex in the shaft and the wobble was significant. Wobble, 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 wobble. I guess that's why old line shafts are often fairly chunky. So I had to take it apart again and add another bearing halfway along. I also put a safety guard on the part I need to walk under to get to the engine. Otherwise that spinning collar would likely take my hat off and that wouldn't do it all would it? So now I have a line chart. How exciting is that? I want to move the bandsaw down along it so it's in the right place for another project. But I need to build the roof of the shed first. Add some more support to the bearings and the shafts and everything. And to keep things dry too, which would be nice. And I'd like it all to go much quicker, but of course the finances are slowing me down. And Everyone's too busy to help these days. So I just have to learn more patience. 